Do you have a desire to deepen your faith, better understand Christian apologetics, or to get a biblical perspective on current events? Well, I've tried to make it simple for you to do just that. On my website, alexmcfarland.com, there's a new section called Ask Alex Online. It's simple, it's clean, and you can read my answers to common questions about God, faith, and the Bible. So visit the website, alexmcfarland.com, and look for the section that says Ask Alex Online. The Spiritual Condition of America, Politics, Culture, and Current Events, Analyzed Through the Lens of Scripture. Welcome to The Alex McFarland Show. Have you ever heard the phrase, by your request? Hi, Alex McFarland here. Those of you that know Angie and me know that we've played music and sung, and uh, we love music. And I remember back in the 90s, there was a program on cable TV called By Your Request. And they would have famous artists. They, I remember seeing the Bee Gees and Bob Dylan and Elton John and different ones. And the audience could ask anything, and the people would play it. I remember watching... Elton John on one of these buy your request shows and people were asking obscure things and he would say, oh, I haven't thought of that song in years, but I'll do my best to play it. Well, today we have a show that we might call buy request because I have with me and you've heard him on the program before longtime colleague and friend. He's he's really like family to Angie and me, Kamal Saleem. We were colleagues at Focus on the Family. Many of you know his testimony. Perhaps you've seen his books and videos uh, raised in the Muslim world. He became a born-again Christian. And really, like no other scholar that I know, Kamal's knowledge of the Middle East, of Bible history, Bible prophecy, the rise of Islam, the struggle between the children of Isaac, the children of Ishmael, and then how as a Christian to reach out to Muslims. He is the expert, quite literally. And he does not know what we're going to talk about. He does not know what I'm going to ask. But I just, I feel Kamal like a kid at Christmas because I'm going to avail myself to your knowledge. And the listeners will benefit from your wisdom as well. So first of all, I want to say thank you. And in a moment, we'll ask some questions. But welcome, my dear brother, and thanks for being with us. Uh, Brother Alex, uh, what uh, astonished me that you are not just scholar, but the lover of God. Truly, when somebody become your friend, they become more than friend. They become family. You know, everything that you do and you say it just knocked the socks out of my feet, you know. So, so it's such a blessing and honor to be with you and, and co-labor with you. This is a great time to be together. Well, before we start the questions, and folks, you don't want to miss this. This is going to be great. I want you to tell people what your website is, how may people find you, the books, the videos you've created. Yes, yeah, so my, my website, you know, if you want to know more about me, we don't advertise ourselves out there on purpose just because some people don't like us and they can they meet us over there and harm us. So uh, our website is kumministries.com. That is K-O-O-M-E, next word, no spaces, ministries, plural, dot com. Over there, you know, my latest book is Ishmael Redeemed, Call to the Kingdom. And this is about all what God is doing in the last days and how he's bringing the millions of Muslims to, uh, to graft them into the promise of Jesus Christ, you know, and then not just that, but also I had a book, uh, it's called The Coalition, me and General Jerry Boykin, who is the founder, of, one of the founder of the Delta Force, you know, we work together and we still work together and we are writing sequel on a coalition and I have my autobiography, The Blood of Lambs, and I have several other things and DVD, but you can find them all on our website at K-O-O-M-E ministries.com. Well, thank you very much, and it's, it's great to be with you. So let me read a scripture that we've heard about in the news a lot since October of 23, uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39. And in Ezekiel 38, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. 
and say, Thus saith the Lord, Gog, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I would encourage people to read Ezekiel 38 and 39. So, Kamal Salim, what is Gog? What is Magog? What is Meshach? What is Tubal? Are these nations... Do they still exist? Help us understand this. So before I answer this question, we need to know what we are dealing right now with. So this October 7th, that the war with Israel and Hamas and, uh, and other faction, Hezbollah, this is the continuous war of Psalms 83. So Psalms 83 will lead to Gog and Magog, but Psalms 83 is a declaration by God to the church to pray in intercession for Israel for such time as this. And this is a mandate, you know, for the church to pray those prayers. And if we come to understand this, we come to understand that the bloodline of Hamas, because, you know, they are not Ishmaelite, even though that they are Sunni, that they are not Ishmaelite. They are the Edoms, you know, from the Adamites, you know, so from bloodline of Esau. And then also that they are the, from the sons of Lot, you know, the two uh, grandsons of, you know, sons of Lot, you know, they came, you know, radical remnant too. But then we see also the bloodline of the Amalekite mm-hmm. and we see also the Canaanite, you know, and we are seeing a mixture of people that they fought against Israel throughout time and history from the beginning of time. And so, but all this you know, what happened is all this must happen. You know, you go like, how come Israel with all its glory never understood that there were attack was coming at them and it was surprise attack. So we need to understand exactly that this has to happen specifically to awaken Israel to the next stage of war. So Israel will have to defeat Hezbollah next. And uh, as they defeated Hamas right now, and then they will move after that they will move to peace treaty as they take more lands that God gave it to them as their inheritance from the beginning of time, but it was not the right time, but now is the time because they were hostile against them. When I read Psalm 83, and I was following along, and by the way, it was letter perfect, the way that you were sharing these. I mean, here they are, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, the Moabites, the Malachites, Philistines, the Midianites, you know your scripture. Here is the thing. Some of these ancient adversaries against Israel, like the Philistines, do these nations still exist? Yes, they do. As a matter of fact, there's a blessings and their curses. So we see the, the blessing and the curses was spoken. This is when Jacob and Esau, you know, God said to, uh, to Isaac, you know, out of your wife's belly, there will be two nations coming out. Two nations, you know, and and we saw that Esau came first and he was holding to the foot of Jacob, you know, the ankle of Jacob. He was trying to kill him even in his mother womb. This is what the word of God described to us as you go into the Aramaic, that he was hostile to his brother. So what happened, we see the first terrorist on the rise against Israel, against God people, against the Ishmaelite, against the Israelite was Esau. Esau was the first terrorist, and God revealed his agenda and how he's going to destroy his brother Jacob and how, you know, he came to destroy and steal Ishmael inheritance. And so we see the Palestinian today, every land they enter in, they try to take over the land that they have been invited to. So that's why a lot of nations don't want the, the Philistine to come to their nation because they see trouble coming about. We need to understand that it is a spiritually rooted within these people. We've got to take a break. Our very special guest, Christian, former Muslim, scholar of history, scripture, and the geopolitical affairs, past and present, Kamal Salim. Stay tuned. We're going to continue with the uh, questions by request. Fox News and CNN call Alex McFarland a religion and culture expert. Stay tuned for more of his teaching and commentary after this.
In recent years, our nation has suffered greatly and we seem to be on a rapid moral decline. We've rejected God, morality, and we've almost completely lost our sense of patriotism. It's no wonder that many are asking the question, is this the end of America? Hi, Alex McFarland here, and I want to make you aware of my book, The Assault on America, How to Defend Our Nation Before It's Too Late. You know, our nation has seen politicians that are corrupted by greed and they've got a vested interest in power, and many of our elected officials seem to care little about the country that they've been appointed to serve. Read my book, The Assault on America. We can stand up for our great nation and defend America before it's too late. It's available everywhere. You can learn more on my own website, which is alexmcfarland.com. Read the book, The Assault on America, How to Defend Our Nation Before It's Too Late. He's been called trusted, truthful, and timely. Welcome back to The Alex McFarland Show. Welcome back to the program. May God bless you. You know, in addition to airing on 237 radio stations around the country, this is also posted on all the podcast platforms like iTunes and Buzzsprout and wherever you listen to material. So you might want to share this and tell others, and we appreciate you spreading the word. But I'm here with Kamal Saleem, and uh, he doesn't know the questions I'm asking. But one that I think a lot of people were asking, especially in the aftermath of October 7, is the word Palestinian the same as Philistine? Philistine is Palestinian. Palestinian is an American word. Philistine is the Arabic word, you know, that, you know, that's what they are. So the Philistine, these were people came out of the bloodline of Ham. Ham is the firstborn son to Noah. So, and Shem was the second one, and Japheth was the third, third one. All these things are rooted and embedded in bloodlines, you know, all those curses and blessings. Noah one day he went to sleep and he had a few too many and he got drunk and then Ham was coming out of his tent mocking his father and then when Shem found out what happened he went and he took his brother Japheth and covered his father nakedness Mm -hmm. and so when Noah woke up the word of God says he knew he knew what Ham did to him so and that word is used in Genesis again and we see that you know God said you know and Adam knew Eve so he slept with Eve you know so he had a relationship with her uh, so Ham mocked his father and did what he did to him so when Noah woke up he blessed Shem and he cursed Ham and he specifically cursed his first son Canaan And that's why God said to Israel to go possess the Canaanites, the land of the Canaanites. And as we see the bloodline today, you know, people acting one way versus the other, we need to know who are these people, what their bloodline, and why they're acting like this. October 7th, what took place over there, that was a spiritual war. It was more than a physical war. The, the first thing, there's a war in heaven right now. And it is, uh, God is, is heaven, it's called Moad. It's a Hebraic word, it's Aramaic. Moad is a date. God held different date. In the Greek, it's called Keros. And these are dates specifically he held in eternity because he promised to do something on earth in the right timing. So God is having that open window over the Ishmaelites, over the Muslim people all over the world, where God is bringing the Muslims to the table of Jesus Christ. And we see what's happening over there that, you know, that this war that took place, that Saudi Arabia was about to sit down with Israel and sign the Abrahamic Accords. And by doing so, the whole Muslim world will have to follow in the footsteps of Saudi Arabia to recognize Israel as a sovereign state for the first time. And then the second thing is Jerusalem as the state capital of Israel. And that's where Jesus Christ will return. All this happened. So Iran launched that war through Hamas and through Hezbollah against Israel to stop the signing of the Abrahamic Accords. Kamal, 
as long as I've been alert and aware ever since I was a child, it seems like the Middle East has been in the news. And I think about the Shah of Iran in 1979 and the Ayatollah Khomeini. I think about by the 80s, uh, Yasser Arafat was frequently in the news. And he said they wanted Israel driven into the sea. I think about Anwar Sadat was becoming friendly with Israel and was assassinated, right. just sitting a few seats away from Princess Diana at a function. So uh, it seems like whenever Middle Eastern leaders try to befriend Israel, it does not end well for them. That's exactly right. What we're dealing with is uh, we have a group after the fall of the Ottoman Empire, which is the Turks, you know, uh, today Erdogan Tayyip, the president of Turkey, he's trying to rise up again the, uh, the Ottoman Empire. And he built the monument and he built the armories and he is changing the nation. So what happened is upon the fall of this, a group, a unique group called the Muslim Brotherhood rose up to glory and power to bring about jihadism, which is a holy war, and by doing, bringing Sharia to all nations. So their strategy was, if we embedded Sharia, and Sharia is the Islamic constitution, it constitutes everything to the Muslim of way of life, the do and the don'ts, the whole nine yards. So what happened is, they can infiltrate the nation from within, creating nation within nations, state within state. You know? So therefore, what happened is, we see that this group start, you know, the birth, Yasser Arafat, Yasser Arafat, he, his great-grandfather, he was the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, which is who uh, he sat with Hitler, and he raised two biggest regiments of the SS, you know, from Muslim nation, and they killed more Jewish people than any other German soldier. You know, and so we, we see all this as a bloodline, and these bloodline, we see that they're coming from Ham, you know, and uh, because Egypt was born out of Ham bloodline, you know, Africa was out of Ham bloodline, and then we see them mixed in, in the Middle East and different places. And that's why we see Iran is rising because Iran is part of Keturah's son, and these are Shia. This is not just physical, it's not just uh, political or military. As I'm hearing this, and lineages of people that date back to the first book of the Bible. This is very spiritual, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, and we see, you know, upon the, you know, the, the second Genesis, which is, you know, when the flood took place, you know, and the new beginning started about, we see those bloodline start taking place over there and the blessing and the curses took place with all this. And so now we see all these things are rising up, those that they're against God and those that they are for God. You know, so, but we see the Ishmaelites coming to sit at the table with their brother, the Israelite, Bahrain, Jordan, and UAE, United Arab Emirates, and Oman. All of them signed the treaty, the Abrahamic Accords. The only thing is left is Kuwait and Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia was coming to sign these accords to recognize Israel and to recognize, you know, the table of Abraham is to be resurrected again in the Middle East. And so Iran is dealing with two problems. The first problem is they don't have the power over the Muslim world. They could not control the Muslim world. And Saudi Arabia is in front of them. If Iran has a nuclear power, before they hit Israel, they will hit Saudi Arabia. They will destroy Mecca and utterly that Mecca will exist no more because they want people to go to Iraq and to do, doing pilgrimage to the Shia, you know, imams, you know, and what so have you, and to bring about the Al-Mahdi, which is the 12th imam, and who is, will lead the Muslim to holy war against the whole world and conquer it. But with all this, what they found out that the, the second problem is Iran is the fastest uh, conversion of Muslim people in the world, in the world, it's the fastest growing church today. Millions are converting, and so they realize if they start a war, you know, with, you know, Israel, what so have you, they can raise the banner of disillusioned people to start fighting against Israel and stop this, you know, a Christian conversion. We've got to take a break. We have several more blockbuster questions, folks. To the best of my ability, I'm asking the questions that I think you probably would ask if you were here with our very special guest, Kamal Salim. Don't go away. 
Fox News and CNN call Alex McFarland a religion and culture expert. Stay tuned for more of his teaching and commentary after this. Over the last several decades, it's been my joy to travel the world talking with children, teens, adults, people of all ages about the questions they have related to God, the Bible, Christianity, and how to know Jesus personally. Hi, Alex McFarlane. I want to make you aware of my book, The 21 Toughest Questions Your Kids Will Ask About Christianity. You know, we interviewed hundreds of children and parents and families to find out the questions that children and people of all ages are longing to find answers for. In the book, we've got practical, biblical, real-life answers that they have about how to be a Christian in this modern world. My book, The 21 Toughest Questions Your Kids Will Ask, you can find it wherever you buy books or at resources.afa.net. He's been called trusted, truthful, and timely. Welcome back to The Alex McFarland Show. Welcome back to the program. What an honor to have my historical, biblical, theological jukebox in front of me. You know, uh, used to be in restaurants, a jukebox, you could press a button and play your favorite record. Well, I can ask Kamal Salim and I'll get answers. So before we resume, I just want to say, my dear brother, thank you. Well, brother, I love you so much. You know, uh, you're truly my brother from the same father. Amen. So before the break, we were talking about the bloodlines and things continue So as I read my Bible, Kamal, it seems like there's going to be a time of trouble on earth called the tribulation. The Bible talks about an antichrist that takes over the world and you can't buy or sell without his mark. And I'm sure everybody listening knows about that. The world seems to be unstable. There's wars. There's rumors of wars like Jesus predicted. So I'm just going to ask you this. Is the Antichrist alive on planet Earth today, in your opinion? Yes, sir. Uh, so, you know, everything that I try to speak on in, a, you know, whether it's history or uh, geography or whatever, I try to root it in the Bible. You know, if it's not rooted in the Bible, it's not real. But then the Word of God, you know, Peter said it. He said when he had the encounter of the book of Acts, he came and he said, he was speaking to these people, you know, all those people that they heard them coming down with, you know, fire on their head and they speak in different languages and what so have you. He said to them, he said, you know, it's been said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And the old man and young man and the old woman and the young woman, they will have dreams and visions. And so he said, and even on your maid servant, I will do the same thing, dreams and visions. Well, the maid servant to Abraham was Hagar, you know, and from my young, from my childhood, I remember I was having dreams, but when I became a follower of Jesus Christ, I started having visions and the visions were so amazing, you know, because, uh, you know, they were just brilliant. And I go run to the Bible, try to see if they affirmed in the Bible and read, and then I come to the conclusion that it's true. So I was uh, 32 years ago, I had a vision. And in the vision, I saw this young boy is about seven to eight years old, somewhere in between, you know, he had blue eyes, white hair, fair skin. And the Lord says, behold, the Antichrist. And so, and the people that they're around him, they look like the Eastern European, you know, and this is what I remember. So if I have to make an assumption, and this is my opinion, I think the Antichrist is among us already, and he's about 32 years old. You know, he will be a counterfeit Christ, and there's a scripture a lot of leaders throughout history, some of the great reformers like the Wesleys, Martin Luther, believed Daniel 11.37 speaks of the Antichrist. Uh, This person, he would be vile, he would be evil. Daniel 11.37 says, He will not regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. 
Now, it's been theorized that this Antichrist, who will one day take over the world, you know, would he be part Jewish, not regarding the God of his fathers? Some have believed he would be a homosexual because he will not have desire for women. We've seen a rise of atheism. And, you know, I think about this, Kamal, that we're living in a time where the world is wired up. It's a surveillance state. There's internet and cameras everywhere. The last 15 years, globally, there's been a rise of atheism, a lack of morality, the rise of the gay transgender movements. Could these things be setting the stage for the emergence of the Antichrist, who, though we don't know him yet, is somewhere alive on planet Earth? Here's the thing. We have to know what God says, you know. So the enemy, you know, before they come about, they have to create confusion. You know, and Jesus forewarned us. He said, you know, they said, when all these events will happen, Lord, he said, nobody knows the time and hour except the Father, but here's the biggest sign for that time. See that you are not deceived. So it will be the age of deception. So this is where good is evil and evil is good, you know, and light is darkness and darkness is light. This is when people flip inside out and they start, you know, worshiping idolism and, you know, the rise of idols. You know, it'll be like in the days of uh, Elijah where, you know, you know, uh, Jezebel is being worshiped again. But then when we look at all this, God gave us uh, another something that will happen in our time. And it's so powerful. In Isaiah 60, he said, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. He said, See, meaning look at this, pay attention to this, and know this. So all those three, you know, these are command. See, he said, when the darkness fills the earth, and the deep darkness, the heart of the people, then he said, my glory shall come upon you. We have entered that uh, era right now, and we are seeing in America, you know, uh, leaders, you know, our presidents are cursing the God of heaven and earth. They're mocking creation, and they are doing all this. And we are seeing, you know, uh, new people are entering into the presence of Jesus Christ because he's appearing to them. You know, he said, I will build the church and the power of hell will not prevail. And he is building the church and he's appearing to people. And now this, the church is still growing. We are at 33% of the world, the spiritual growth. You know, and the only thing that tracing behind us are the Muslims are at 22%. So there are 10% behind us. And they're trying to catch up with us, but the time is not over yet. It's not up. So when we see all this happening, we know that the time of the Lord is upon us. And now the acceleration of this darkness is going to accelerate. But remember this, the glory, when he said, let there be light, will accelerate in the brilliance of Jesus Christ like never before. People will walk to their death, not afraid, just like Philip did, just like hold it just like all these guys they will walk and they are not afraid because these people will suffer for the living God because every time the blood is spilled then justification has to come from heaven that's mean it's judgment upon those people who did it you know what's exciting to me and I, uh, I would encourage everybody to read Matthew 24 Jesus talked and he is on the Mount of Olives and he said of course in Matthew 24 6 that uh, before he comes, there'd be wars and rumors of war. Nations would rise against nation. There'd be false prophets, persecution of the church. And all these things are going on. In fact, Kamal, even as you and I record this, there are, as I read in the news, 25 wars happening in the world right now. And verse 14 says, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached into all the world as a witness unto all nations and then the end will come. You know what's amazing? With the internet, and I, I've got friends that are in Bible translation, right now as it's glorious. The Word of God is being put in all these language groups. And let me just say this. I was at a national ministry. Everybody would know the name of this ministry. And we were looking at the screen, their website. We got in there, the analytics and they could see where the website was being viewed and who was reading the gospel presentation. Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Turkey, I Indonesia. 
And I think about when the Lord said the gospel would be presented to the globe, all nations. Well, the Internet is part of that, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And here's the thing. Everything that God promised, everything God says will be established. It's not if, it's when will happen. And so right now, you know, we have to go back to Genesis. Genesis is one of my very favorite books. I love Genesis, Isaiah, and Revelations. Amen. These are my three favorite books, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, just in the middle, at the beginning, and the end, you know, and so we see God promises. So, for example, all those people that they consider themselves Muslims today, they consider themselves as the sons of Abraham even though that they are not son of Abraham, because not everybody's from the line, uh, bloodline of Abraham. So because of this, you know, it's a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. What happened, you know, so it was the grafting into Jesus Christ that made the difference. So God encountered, you know, came to Abraham, and now Ishmael was 14 years old. And God said to him, he said, listen, Abraham, I'm making a covenant with you, and this covenant is going to be in the flesh, you know, circumcision. And he said, not just, not it, you know. He said, and this time next year, your wife will have a son. And his wife laughed and he said, his name shall be, he said, why did your wife laugh? He said, his name shall be called Isaac. He was the second son of Abraham. The first son was Ishmael and he was named by God himself. And then Isaac was named by God. This is the first person ever was Ishmael. So we look at the name Ishmael. What does it mean? It means God hears or God listens. He's listening. And we don't know what, how does it interact when a Muslim cry out, God hears. So this Ishmael, when he cried out in the bush, God heard him. So now, and God said that to him, he said, you're going to have son. And Abraham loved Ishmael so much because that's his, the, the son that he invested in, that's in Genesis uh, 16 and 17. And so what happened to him, he said, he said, how about my son Ishmael, that he will live you know, uh, before you, Lord? And God says, as for Ishmael, I have blessed him, and I will multiply him greatly, and I will make him a great nation. And God gave him 12 prince, just like he gave Jacob 12 prince. You know, he gave him 12 sons exactly. And God blessed Ishmael and watched over Ishmael all those years. So now it brings us here to 21st century. So you go like, God made a promise to Abraham and God is fulfilling the promise. Muslim all over the world having dreams and visions and having an encounter with Jesus Christ. So this is a time to really celebrate and God says, I have opened the floodgate over the Muslims. Now come on down, Christians, and receive your inheritance. This inheritance belonged to the Lord, but we have to bring them to the table. Because he said, go to every highway and byway and bring them in. These people have been orphaned all those years, and now they're going to come to the sonship of the living God. You know, what I'm about to say could open up another hour. So I'm going to ask you to... Be as brief as you can, but I've got this question. Does the Ark of the Covenant still exist? And somewhere hidden away, I've heard Egypt, I've heard Syria, I've heard under the Temple Mount, does the famed Ark of the Covenant still exist? So here's a theory that I heard by Jewish, not by me. Where Jesus Christ was crucified and the earthquake took place, And remember, he was speared and his blood fell and went into the crack of the ground. And they believed that the prophet that lived in the cave under, you know, in the cave of skulls where where Jesus Christ, Golgotha, what happened is the blood ran down and the, the ark was right there. But when Jesus Christ rose, you know, the dead rose with him and paradise was transformed to heaven and what so have you. But here's the thing. Where is Jesus Christ seated right now? At the right hand of the Father. And what is that called? The seat of mercy. What is the mercy seat? The mercy seat is the Ark of the Covenant. What is the Ark of the Covenant? Is when the innocent blood is spilled on it to offer sacrifice to the living God. And so in Psalms 91, he said, uh, you know, it is he who dwells in a secret place 
of the Most High God. The secret place of the Most High God. The secret place of the Most High God. That He dwells under what? Under the shadow of Almighty God. Under His wings. Under His feathers. What was on the Ark of the Covenant? The wings, the two, you know, angels, uh, the seraphim with their, you know, uh, with their wings extended. Yeah. So this is where the Ark of Covenant and Jesus is seated on the Ark of Covenant right now. The seat of mercy where the blood was spilled. And now he bought humanity, those that they received him, that they are the follower of Jesus Christ. And they are filled with his glory to fulfill the purpose of God in the land of the living. Well, hallelujah. And let me say this, folks. Life's purpose is to know Christ. On my website, which is alexmcfarland.com, there's a tab. It says, what does God say about my relationship with him? Now, we've given this book out to tens of thousands of people in multiple languages. But if you need to come to Christ or you need to come back, to Jesus. He's as close by as a prayer. Go to our website and click on that tab. Please read that. Call out to Jesus today. As Kamal Salim has so powerfully said, the Bible is coming to pass. Every word of scripture is yea and amen. And we want you to be ready. God wants you to be ready. The Lord Jesus wants you to be ready. He gave his life and he's as close by as a prayer. If we can help you in any way, if we can encourage you, Uh, reach out to us. When I came from Islam to Christianity, I had a million questions. Even if you don't want to know, receive Christ yet. Even if you don't understand, if you don't understand, ask somebody to help you understand. Because how could you step into something without understanding? So if you have a question, reach out to Brother Alex and ask him, why should I be a Christian? What does it do for me? why Christianity? Why not Hindu or Buddhist or Satanist or whatever it may be? So these are good questions. There is no stupid question. Ask. God bless you. Stay bold. Stay strong. If we can help you and encourage you in your walk and your witness for Christ, please reach out to us. In the meantime, we thank God for Kamal Salim and his time with us, and we thank God for all of your faithful prayers and support. Stay tuned, and we'll continue proclaiming God's truth. Alex McFarland Ministries are made possible through the prayers and financial support of partners like you. For over 20 years, this ministry has been bringing individuals into a personal relationship with Christ and has been equipping people to stand strong for truth. Learn more and donate securely online at alexmcfarland.com. You may also reach us at Alex McFarland, P.O. Box 10231, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27404, or by calling 1-877-YES-GOD and the number 1. That's 1-877-YES-GOD-1. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again on the next edition of The Alex McFarland Show. Christian author and speaker Alex McFarland is an advocate for Christian apologetics. Teaching in more than 2,200 churches around the world, schools, and college campuses, Alex is driven by a desire to help people grow in relationship with God. He arms his audiences with the tools they need to defend their faith, while also empowering the unchurched to find out the truth for themselves. In the midst of a culture obsessed with relativism, Alex is a sound voice who speaks timeless truths of Christianity in a timely way. With 18 published books to his name, it's no surprise that CNN, Fox, The Wall Street Journal, and other media outlets have described Alex as a religion and culture expert. To learn more about Alex and to book him as a speaker at your next event, visit alexmcfarland.com or you can contact us directly by emailing booking at alexmcfarland.com.